BBC Radio Leeds. It's uh, 14 minutes past 10 with a real thing. New to me are everything. Now, I'm joined in the studio this morning by uh, Kate Ball. She set up Mini First Aid four years ago. Good morning. Good morning. Are you well? I am, yes, thank you. So tell us about uh, Mini First Aid. Well, Mini First Aid was, when I set it up, I had young children and I couldn't find a first aid class that was short and that I could take my baby to. Okay. So that was, the, that was the reason I set it up, because I thought, actually, whilst there's lots of providers out there that provide a longer course, I wanted something short that I could go to and baby could come to. So I set it up in Leeds, in Chapel Allerton, in my kitchen. In Chapel A. Yeah, in Chapel A, in my kitchen. Um, and it's just gone boom from there. And we now have 40-odd franchises across the UK, which is just amazing. Did you ever think that it would expand this far? I wanted it to. I didn't think it would happen as quickly as it has. And we've never advertised. So we've never advertised for anyone to join us. Everybody's joined us because they've either met another franchisee or they've been to one of our classes and gone, I love this. Yeah. Um, or it's been somebody that's been impacted by a first aid situation and thought, I've got to get out there and start teaching first You do aid. hear these stories, don't you, um, do. occasionally of, of children as, as young as three years old ringing 999 or ringing the emergency number because the parent has, has taught their child, look, if something happens to me, maybe they're uh, suffering from... Mm. Um, anything really which would be possibly putting them in a, in a dangerous situation yeah. uh, epilepsy or something like that and you hear these stories but it's not widely known enough is it really no it's not and we one of the new courses that we run is an early years class which we yeah. take into preschools where we actually get children to practice ringing 999 on a pretend telephone and we talk to them about shouting for help they're a little bit young to start doing cpr etc mm. but they can do that making that emergency call and it's amazing how many children don't know where they live because their parents refer to home as home as, home, as yeah. opposed to their address so one of the things that we ask parents to do in preparation for the class is practice your address with your children and they come in and chant their address which is just fantastic um and it means then that they get an opportunity to just think about if something happened that I'd know what to do. And we don't want to frighten them. We don't want children to be upset or nervous. No, you don't. But that's a very, very obvious thing that you don't really think about, is it? You know, I don't think I, when I was young, when I was four or five years old, I didn't know my address. No. And we don't want children of that age to worry. That's the other thing, is that it's very important that children live in a lovely bubble when they're mm. that age. And we don't want them to think about what if something went wrong. But almost that if something happened, mum or dad or whoever's looking after them suddenly isn't making any noises or has fallen down, I know, I remember from that class yes. that I did at nursery that I just have to press the special number on the phone and somebody will come and help me. And I wrote a book to go along with it. So we have a storybook called The Mini Adventures of Freddie. And uh, Freddie basically gets into lots of different first aid situations, but his main thing is that he's able to call 999 and he knows his address. In some respects, it's almost making it exciting for the child, isn't Absolutely. it? Yeah, well, I needed something to do. I've got four children and I needed something to do with, with my final boy's name, which I never got to use. And I always wanted to call a baby Freddy. Oh. Didn't get that last boy. So I said, right, I'm going to use it in a book instead. So that's where the Freddy adventures come from. So four girls. I've got one boy. Oh, one boy. Uh, one boy and then three girls, yeah. So how are you doing this with, with four? little children well what's their ages crazy so my eldest is seven and then five and they're both at school in Chapel Alton, which is ace um and then i've got the twins who are actually out with your researchers at the moment having a lovely time yeah i've seen it actually <laughs> they was waving through the window and they were dancing to the real thing there we go <laughs> they love it bit, a bit of disco music exactly brilliant. so you've uh, you've been chosen as a, as a finalist in the aphrodite awards which is uh, sponsored by the daily mail isn't it yeah that's right so the actual whole awards is, is a, an organization called every woman which is sponsored by nat west um, but my particular category is Aphrodite. And the, the Aphrodite Award is basically for women who have set up, so it's rewarding entrepreneurs who've set up a business but done it at the time of having young children under the age of 12. So I've got four of those, so I met that criteria. But actually the process of being interviewed for it was gruelling. It was, was like it? being on Dragon's Den. Yeah. Um, and they asked loads of really deep questions about our plans for the business, what we want to do, plus all the money questions that you hear get asked yeah. in Dragon's Den, which is not my forte. <laughs> so I had to make sure I knew all our figures. Um, but they then also wanted to look at the backstory of the business and also what we do with our franchisees. So why our business is perhaps different to a typical franchise business. Mm. Um, and some of the stories of some of the people that work with us. And um, we made it to the finals, which is just wow. awesome. And when is the awards ceremony? 6th of December. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. You've got your frock. Yes, I think so. I think so. Although 
I'm not sure because now they've said you can you can go glam, and I'm thinking maybe ah. I need something a little bit jazzier. So we'll yeah. see. We'll see. And the thing is, around this time of year, you've got all the party dresses as well. Absolutely. Haven't you? So there's there's loads. Of things. Yeah. I bought one from Coast yesterday actually because I thought, oh, it's party season. It's party season. And I've got to do I've got to do tonight at the O2 in London to go to. But that's an aside. Amazing. That's about me. <laughs> but tell me about before uh, mini first aid. What did you train as? What was your profession? Before? So I worked in so quite a lot of first aid. I guess first aid businesses that come from a background of medicine or, yeah. or first aiders. I'm actually, my background is in learning and development and HR and people development. Um, and so I worked for Mars, the big chocolate people. Yeah. And one of the things that we did in our in our job or in our training roles was that we needed to make sure that if you went on a training course, you could remember what you were taught. Because I'm sure everybody's been on a course where they've come out and gone, that was great, but I don't really remember yeah. anything. Um, and so all, all our tr- training that we created, the work that I did developing courses, was all about having memorable courses. So I just took that and said, actually... I got myself qualified as a paediatric instructor, so I have all my first aid training and said, actually, we can apply the same process to first aid training. You don't need to sit and look at a PowerPoint screen. You can look at cards, you can do role plays and have lots of fun, and you can do it whilst having a cup of coffee and bring your baby with you. So we just wanted to make it much more interactive and relaxed, and people love it. Learning should be fun, though, shouldn't it? Absolutely. Otherwise, people don't remember it. You don't want somebody that comes off a first aid course and goes, oh, well, it was great, but I don't really remember much of it. Because ultimately, what we're teaching is people to save lives, so they have to remember it. So how can people become involved or support Mini First Aid? So if they want to come to a class, it's minifirstaid.co.uk is the website. Uh, If they want to join us as a trainer or they want to join us as a franchisee, it's the same. Through the website, it tells you all about working for us we've got it's all pretty much parents that work for us so we have a very much a family ethos come and work with us we support family and people having young children if we can do it with babies then we would uh, you know we're totally supportive of other people doing it as well uh, and again they can apply through the website to come and join us and the website again is is minifirstaid.co.uk okay well thank you very much and good luck for the 6th of december fingers crossed <laughs>